Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I'm going to be checking out this filament dry box from a company called Fix Dry. Now, this is the NT1 model, and they were also kind enough to send this to me so that I can do a video about it. Now, currently, if you go on their website, they have this on sale for $79.99. But if it's not on sale, if you happen to miss the sale, the regular price is $129. And I'll leave a link in the description so that you can head over there and check it out for yourself. But the whole thing about filament dry boxes is the fact that filaments are hygroscopic, which means that they absorb moisture in the air. And depending on where you live, you have really high humidity, humidity levels, it's really damp in the air. If you have filament lying out, it's going to absorb it and then it can cause some printing issues. It can give you problems with adhesion issues. It can give you issues with stringing. It can give you problems with clogs. You know, it can just make the whole 3D printing process a lot more irritating than it needs to be. And it's all because it's it's too wet, but filament dry boxes solve that problem by removing that moisture from the filament. Now this particular model from Fix Dry is able to hold two one kilogram spools of filament at the same time, or one three kilogram spool of filament if you happen to have any of those lying around. And then they also have multiple exit points here so that if you want to lead the filament out through this box because you can print with the filament still inside of here, then you'll be able to lead it out of here and into your printer with whatever kind of setup that you might happen to have. So let me open this up and show you the inside of it a little bit. And while I do, I wanna point something out, check this out. So I have my hands on the lid here. And the main thing about this that I wish were different is I wish that it were easier to take this lid off. Now on one hand, it's good because it's nice and sealed, you know, and you wanna keep the heat in to a degree and it is able to vent because there's several holes. But when you wanna take it off, since there's no handle or anything, you kinda of have to anchor it a bit and then you're able to take it off. So if you have this in a position where it might not be as easy for you to get to, it can be a little bit fiddly trying to get the lid off. It's on there pretty good. It's a pro and a con at the same time. So here is the inside of the filament dry box. What just fell out is the shroud. I'll tell you what this is for in a moment, but it does have its own heating element. It does have its own fan on the inside of it. And then it also has these two independent rollers. These are not electronic, they just roll by friction. And the way that it works is when you have a spool of filament inside of it, as your printer is taking the filament and it's pulling it in, then it's going to roll just like this inside of the filament dry box. And as it does that, it'll just make sure that it keeps it on these rollers so that you can continue to print and heat at the same time. Now, like I said, these hold two one kilogram or one three kilogram spool of filament. But if you happen to have one of these little things here, which is just a 0.25 kilogram spool of filament, and this is TPU, something that also should be uh, dehydrated and dried if you're gonna be using it, especially if you haven't used it for a long time. This right here won't fit. So the, the spool rollers are too far apart. Though this is the world of 3D printing, I'm sure someone can or probably has already developed some type of attachment that you can put in this to accommodate smaller spools of filament like this. But just on its own, it's not gonna fit on the rollers, so it's not gonna be able to roll. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't dry it in there. It just means that you can't use these rollers on the spool. Now, back to this shroud piece here. So the shroud piece goes down into these four holes that's in the filament box. And what it does is it redirects the heat so that it can go around these spools of filament. Because without the shroud, that heat will just continue to hit the filament and then that can cause issues. It can damage the filament. So instead, the shroud pushes the hot air around the filament instead of just centralizing it in one spot. But you see, I got two rolls of filament in here now, and then I can just close this up, and then you will be good to go. Now, the other thing about this machine, I'm gonna turn it on in a moment, is that it allows you to set a specific temperature, and it'll also tell you what the humidity level is inside of the box, and then it also has a countdown timer. And inside of this 
uh, instruction manual, it even gives you some recommended temperatures for different types of filaments, PVA and PLA, TPU, ABS, ASA, PETG, nylon, and then it also gives you recommended temperatures and it also gives you recommended temperature times in which to dry it. All right, so let's turn this machine on and go over some of these functions. So after I turn this on, it's able to remember the last settings that I used. So for example, currently, the temperature inside the box is 45 degrees Celsius. The humidity level is at 33% and the drying time is set to six hours. I was drying some PETG filament in here previously and when I press the menu button, it shows the temperature that it's trying to get up to. So it's trying to climb up to 65 degrees Celsius. And then as the temperature increases, then this humidity level is going to drop. And I've seen it drop to about 20% and lower. And if you want to program it, all you have to do is hit the menu button and whatever is flashing, you can just press the plus or minus buttons to make the temperature go up or make the temperature go down. Maximum temperature, that you can set is 70 degrees Celsius. Lowest temperature that you can get to is 20 degrees Celsius. And then if you hit the menu button again, it's gonna go down here and that's for the timer. So you can change the hours. You hit it again, you can change the minutes and then you press it again and then it just sets everything. So it's kind of just like a digital clock. And then you just press the power button, and turn it off again. Other thing that's recommended is that if you're going to be drying two spools of filament to make sure that they are the same type of filament, because when you're drying something like PLA and then the other one is going to be nylon, we're talking about a 20 degrees Celsius difference between the recommended printing temperatures for those. So just to avoid anything, you know, crazy from happening as far as you ruining your filament and not getting it to the point where you want it to be, just make sure that if you're drying two spools, they're the same type. So that's how the machine works. Now let me tell you what my experience has been like using this filament dryer. Now it really came at the perfect time because I was starting to experience some problems with my PETG filament. I was noticing I was having some adhesion issues. I was getting more stringing than I used to get. And it was just not printing as good as it was when I first got it. And I thought that maybe my nozzle was partially clogged or something like that. But when this came in, I decided to dry that filament for six hours at the recommended temperature of 65 degrees Celsius. And then when I went to print with it again, I saw a noticeable difference in the quality of those prints. I wasn't having those immediate problems in anymore that I noticed and it was because of the filament had absorbed too much moisture I guess because this happened to take that problem away so that's what I've been doing with the rest of my PETG filament I've just been throwing it in here and I've been letting it dry before I print it now I also tried to print with the filament in the box since you can do that and the way that i was doing it was just taking a strand of the filament and i was pulling it through this hole and i was running it through my printer now here's the thing that you need to know about filament dry boxes you're going to have to set this up in a way that doesn't put too much strain on your printer and what i mean by that is when i had this sitting side by side with the flash forge adventure 5m the way that you load filament into that machine is from the back and it goes up through the filament detection sensor and then it goes up and down into the print head. But with this sitting right next to the printer and the filament coming out, over time it was starting to pull the entire filament box. So as the print went on and on I was noticing this was literally starting to be dragged across the table to the point where it almost fell off the table because that's how powerful those gears are bringing in that filament. And then at the same time, since it's pulling the machine, it was also pulling on the filament spool. So instead of it being centered like this and just rolling smoothly, it was pulling it off its axis and then it, was, it wasn't able to roll freely anymore. It was just kind of almost laying down on its side. So that could cause some issues. And what you'll have to do is just set this up in a way to kind of make sure that the path between the filament and your printer is not one that has a bunch of bends and curves on it that's gonna end up dragging the machine. One thing that worked for me was putting this directly behind the printer. That way, when I was feeding the filament through it, it was going through here 
up into the filament sensor and then it wasn't pulling it at any angle. It was just pulling the filament straight up and into the, into the printer. That was the best way for me to do that. I've also seen people with filament boxes do things such as they have a shelf above the printer and they just feed it downwards. However you decide to do it, just kind of keep that in mind because just simply feeding it into the printer, if it is at an angle, it will pull the filament and it will pull the filament box with it. There's also some other setups that you can do if you want to run a PTFE tube from here into the printer without there being any open air in between. It did provide an extra PTFE tube in the box. So if you wanted to fashion something where you got some couplers or something, and then you can run that inside of this box and run the tube out and make sure that your filament never comes in contact with the open air, you can do that as well. For me, what I'm using it for is just drying the filament beforehand, and then I'll just take the filament out, put it on the machine, and then just run it that way. Because where I am, I don't think it's gonna be an issue with the filament absorbing a ton of moisture in the handful of hours that I might have it out printing. But this is incredibly useful to have, and it can hold two rolls of filament at once. And for the price of $80 right now, based on the other uh, types of filament dryers that I have seen, I think that that is a reasonable price. So again, if you're in the market for a filament dryer and things that I said here got you interested, just check out the link in the description, take you over to the Fix Dry website where you can check this out and pick it up for yourself. So that's gonna do it for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.